Hey guys, we just finished doing the upgraded antenna mod to the Bugs 2 controller. Stay tuned and we'll show you how I did it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel here. Today we're going to do an upgrade on the MJX Bugs 2 transmitter. We're going to modify the antenna. We're going to put in an, an external antenna on it so that we can get better range. What's happening to me is I'm not losing complete signal, but I am dropping signal about, say, 150 to 200 meters up and anywhere from 200 meters out. The signal drops and starts beeping at me and I'm not losing control or anything but more than anything it's annoying and just want a solid connection to the drone. So I've done this before to another uh, drone of mine, another transmitter. I actually did it to my SEMA X8 clone here where I did exactly what we're going to do here. It really worked for this one for the SEMA clone so hopefully it's going to do some wonders on the Bugs 2 transmitter. And I've seen a few other of these out there. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm not uh, not necessarily different the way it's installed, but different to where the antenna is installed. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get started on that. First thing we got to do is pull this guy apart. So first thing, let's pull that battery cover off. One screw to pull that off. Pull it out, remove your batteries. Safety first. Don't want to be doing a mod like this without uh, having those batteries out. Alright. After that, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws to remove, and then we'll open it up. Alright, one more screw to take out. We're going to get that last one out here, and then we'll be good to start. So, Typically, I, it's a weekend. I'd be flying today, but uh, up here in uh, Western Canada, on the southern part of the province, we have over 60 mile an hour winds, 100 kilometer an hour winds, overnight, all night, throughout the day today. So instead of flying, we're modding. That's what we do. If we can't be out flying, we like to get our uh, hands dirty and get some mods done here. Now what we got to do is take this back cover off. And just carefully keep the face facing down. You don't want the buttons to... you got these four buttons up top here. They'll fall out pretty easily once this cover comes off, so we just want to make sure they stay in place. Alright, so there we go. That's our first look at the inside here. I'm going to turn this in a way to where I... Typically what you would do is you would desolder the positive and negative. And then you don't have to worry about um, breaking them. But they've given us enough length here that we can work with. Alright, so fake antenna comes out. Got to keep that. We need that. The actual antenna is looking like it's hot glued in there. Just going to grab a pair of pliers. Yeah, and the glue's not even really sticking on anything. So there we go. There's your antenna. That's what they give us. All right, guys, this step is not necessarily uh, one you have to do yourself, but for the purposes of this video, make it easier for me. I'm gonna remove the positive and negative leads off of the, the back cover. There we go. Alright, so we just took the two leads, the positive and negative lead, off the back of the battery cover. Mostly just for my being able to make this video a little easier. Here's what we got to deal with. We now have to remove this white glue here. It's like a hot glue silicone. We need to remove that to get access to the solder that's underneath. So we're going to start by uh, picking away at that gonna cut away with it a bit with a knife there and once you get that all cleared out and then you can move on to the next step once we get a better look at it here but looking at it a bit closer here I'm getting it so 
this would be your positive, the center connection. There's an empty connection over here. And your ground is going to be closest to the sheathing of the antenna. That'll be your ground. So we're going to clear that off a bit more and then we're going to desolder them. So center was your positive. Outside should be outside braided wire is your negative. All right, we've got that all cleaned out now. We've got clear access to our positive terminal and our negative terminal here. So we're going to put this aside for the moment. And we're going to take our SMA connector here that we need for the antenna. And we've got to prep that now. All right, so what you're going to want to do is strip back the plastic OSA sheathing to expose the braided cable. And you're going to want to unwind that cable because in the center of that cable is this little the cable, by the way, this braided part, that's your ground. And you've got a piece in here that's covered by more plastic sheathing. That's your positive. So we need to separate your ground and expose the positive, a little bit of the positive here so that we can solder that. We've prepped our, uh, our SMA wire here, basically our connection wire. We've taken our, what we've done is we've taken the sheathing on the outside, we pulled it back. This is the hard part, is getting that sheathing back without uh, breaking the small wires. That's why I suggest we use a longer uh, connector here so we have some room to play. And then we've taken the braided wire, we've pulled it back, we've twisted a little bit off to the side here. And the positive wire here, we've taken and pulled its sheathing back. It's got a clear tube sheathing there. And we've twisted that up. What we're gonna do now, make our connections. I've also got a piece of shrink tube on here, which I'm gonna slide up as far as I can after those connections are made. And then after that, we'll encase it with hot glue, put it back together. I'll show you where we're gonna drill the hole and then we'll uh, continue on with that. All right, so next step, let's get those soldered up. All right, so next step is to solder these up. We're gonna prep these wires by dipping them in some flux and tinning them, which is gonna allow us to, uh, it's gonna allow the solder to take to the wire a little bit better. So we've got our soldering iron heated up over here. I do have the Bugs brand soldering iron. <laughs> Get a little bit of solder onto the tip of this iron. And then we're just going to get some solder. There, we got the ground soldered up. We still have enough on there. Positive is now done. And now we're ready to make our connections. So, what I'm going to do is make my positive connection first since my, my ground wire has some play. So I'm going to just get a little bit more solder on the iron here before I continue. We're going to get our positive wire right now. And uh, hopefully this will be in view. I'm actually thinking I got a little bit too much solder on there. There we go. I'm just going to get that positive wire touched there. There we go. Positive wire done. It's nice, strong. Well, feel strong. I'm going to get a little bit more solder onto the end here. So now we're just getting our negative. All right. So there we go, guys. Those joints are great, nice and strong. All right, guys, now that we've got our soldering done, we've got our negative over here, our positive right here. It's time to get some, encase these in some hot glue, making sure that our positive and negative leads stay separate. That way there's gonna be no issues. So I'll start by casing that just to make sure that our solder does not uh, let go and don't be shy you can always get the glue off if you need to after but we want to make sure that you have a solid joint there Just gonna push that down a bit there we go all right now that we've got our hot glue over top of our solder points I've run the shrink tube down put a little heat to it and this is just to help keep 
that ground wire away from anything and to help keep the wire protected here. All right, so that part's done. We're done there. Next step is going to be to figure out where we're going to put our hole. A lot of guys I see like to run it out the top of this bugs remote. That's not a bad idea, but this is not the way I want to do it. Reason being is I still want to use the bugs FPV, the cell phone holder, and I just don't want to take the chance of it not working or something getting in the way or me having to take it up over top of an antenna if I need to get it off without removing the antenna. I think uh, looking on the inside right here is where we're going to put it in. There's nothing that's going to get in the way. Everything's clear there in that area which would be right here. Lots of room. Everything's clear there so we won't hit anything. So that shouldn't be an issue. And we've got you know, nice solid plastic right there. Should be nothing to worry about. So now we need to figure out what drill bit size we need. That usually is not an issue for me because I typically go with the step up bit for most things. So we're gonna get the step up bit ready here. Um, I do like to drill a pilot hole. So I think I'm gonna do that in this case just to prevent the step up bit from walking on me. And I am kind of obsessive compulsive when it comes to trying to keep things centered and this will help me do that with the smaller bit. So we're just gonna go nice and easy. There we go, nice and center. How do I know it's centered? Well, I lined it up with this little notch right here that's inside. That's dead center of the antenna, the fake antenna, which I'm right in line with, so should be good there. So now we're gonna, now we've got our pilot hole. We'll step, step over to the step up bit. And we'll just take that slowly, one size at a time until we get to where we need. Okay guys, so we've drilled our hole. Now, before we continue getting the connector here run through the hole, we've got to reattach our battery cables. All right guys, now that we've run our antenna out the back, our connection, like we planned, we've got it soldered, hot glued, we've got some shrink wrap run over top there. We should have no issues with it grounding out. We've got our negative and our positives resoldered for the battery compartment. What I want to do now is, typically what I do is take an 8 millimeter socket, I fit it over top of the, the connection there, and just the last little turn just to make sure it's nice and tight. Now we can take our fake mounting or fake antenna or the phone holder post, make sure you've got that little notch facing the back, right, because that's what this clips into. So we're going to slide that in to place there, get it into view here, we'll slide that into place and we don't want to pressure anything, we don't want to put any pressure on anything I should say. We're going to just nicely push our antenna down there, no pressure, this drops down nicely. Get the back of this remote back together, everything's got to line up perfectly or else it's not going to go in. See that took a little while to get together but I didn't break anything. I didn't want any pressure put on anything, especially on the antenna. So now we've got, what we've got here now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws to put back in, which I put aside earlier. We'll start with the two small screws that go up top here and work our way down. All right, we're just tightening the last screw. Transmitter's back together. Before we go anywhere any further with it, we're gonna screw on the antenna on the back here. We don't wanna accidentally power this up without the antenna. That's the big uh, worry about these things. Okay, antenna's on. Everything works. It powers up, great. That's what we want. <laughs> now, for me, this is where I wanted to bring out, this was my ideal spot. 
and only because I've done this before with the X8 clone and it worked well. It works well in that spot. You can set it down, kind of keeps the transmitter up off the ground a little bit at the back end there. But for me, what it also does, it allows me still to use the stock phone holder, which is why I went this route. I'm not sure if putting the antenna up there was going to interfere with that or not. I didn't want to take that chance. So for me, that's a win. That works for me. But now, let me just put this other controller out of the way. We have to make sure it actually um, actually works, right? We actually still get signal to the bugs. So I'm going to fire up a battery here. Can't test it outside. Like I said, we've got 100 kilometer an hour winds out right now, and uh, which is what, 60 miles an hour? Pretty steady winds for 24 hours now, so not going to be able to test this maybe tomorrow. Okay, and great. Look at everything's great, everything connected. We have signal, that's great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a little walk. I'm going to take this bugs a little ways away, and we're going to see if it keeps its signal. So right beside, obviously, we've got five bars, which tells me, yes, the antenna is soldered incorrectly. It's working well. As I believe without that antenna, we're probably not going to get any uh, any signal. So I'll be right back. We're going to move this uh, bugs to the other end of the house. All right, so with three doors, four walls between us, we've lost zero signal. Everything looks like this is going to be a win. This is going to work. So as soon as I can get this... Uh, drone up in the air we'll we'll see how it uh, how it works but uh, anyways I need your guys' help right now I have the 5 dBi antenna on there I do have the little probably a 2 or 3 dBi I have the 10 dBi which is on the back of the X8 clone right now and I have this monster 16 dBi which is just huge let me know if you guys can help me out with this one, uh, that would be awesome. I'd like to know which one do you guys think would be the best to uh, make sure I keep constant uh, signal with my drone. Alright guys, well this is what I can do when I can't fly. I can do mods. I've got plenty of mods in the works that I'm going to share with you guys. So make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. I'd hate for you to miss out on uh, what's coming up. And don't be a stranger. We'll see you guys on the next one. See ya!